How's it everyone? This is Lokahol, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over the strat that I've been running for the last couple of weeks to farm up, at this point, thousands of divines. The idea with this strategy is to get as many monsters in a map as possible, so that when you do get good wisps from the Wildwood, you're maximizing the amount that you're getting out of those wisps. The main way we're going to be doing this is with Beyond, Delhi, Strong Boxes, and of course, Abyss. And in this video, I'm going to be going over the specifics about the Sextants, Atlas Trees, Scarabs, and actually running the maps. So let's have a look at our Atlas to start off. And we're going to start off with the Keystone. So firstly, Wandering Path. This means that our notable Atlas passives do nothing. These are these bigger ones, but all of our small Atlas passives have 100% increased effect. This is primarily impactful on these nodes at the top. This is colloquially known as the top hat. By stacking these, we're getting increased effect of modifiers on our non-unique maps. This means that our maps are going to be harder. However, we're going to be getting a lot more pack size, quantity, and rarity from those maps. We're also benefiting from this item quantity in the middle and these ones, the rarity over here. But there's also a lot of other points that are getting boosted by using Wandering Path. This does mean we cannot use any notable Atlas passives. So there are some downsides, but it is well worth it. Next up, we're going to be taking this Beyond node. So we are doing a bit of Beyond where we can, but this prevents unique bosses from spawning. When a unique boss spawns in beyond now, it ends the beyond. We do not want that to happen. So we are grabbing this. The other little small points, these are just experience leading up to it. But over here, we have beyond portals have increased merging radius. And same over here, chance to spawn beyond portals. And up here, increased quantity of items dropped by beyond demons in your maps. So beyond demons are dropping a lot of stuff. Don't overlook it. Other than that, we need to talk about Abyss. We are grabbing these increased chance to gain Abyss. Even if we're using Sextants and Scarabs, this does add on top of that. So we can have an increased chance to get even more Abysses. So we're getting a lot of increased percent here, here, and here. And then right at the top, we have all of these nodes. Increased chance to gain an Abyss. And then Abyss cracks, spawn, lots more monsters. So that's our abyss. As for the rest of the tree, we are taking the seventh gate. All possible league map crafting options are available while six gateways are allocated. We are going to be taking abyss on the map device. So we do need to take this, which means we need to allocate all of these six Eldritch gateways over here. The rest of the tree over here, we're grabbing Eldritch gaze. We are going to be doing blue Eldritch altars. So the reason for that is that these can spawn increased item quantity and rarity. Also, we can get things like Scarab duplication, Div card duplication, Currency duplication. It all adds up a lot. And then on top of that, with the strong boxes, we have increased chance for strong boxes to be openable again. This is actually the only strong box thing we're taking. We don't really want to take any of these. I will explain why later. But yeah, we're grabbing that strong box. And on top of that, we do have a few leftover points. And with these, you can do whatever you feel. So I have increased chance to contain a blight encounter. If you prefer, you could do harbingers or I guess you could do legion or shrines, whatever you feel like. Currently, I have the blight and also increased chance to gain an elva mission on completion. But I will explain some other things that you can do with those points a bit later in the video. You will be able to find this Atlas tree in the description, but it is pretty straightforward. Just make sure to not miss these little hanging points and these ones over here, as well as these two over here. These are important. They all add up. Next up, let's have a look at the sextants we are using. So I am at the point where I'm using elevated sextants. You do not need to use elevated sextants for this. I just wanted to test it. It made sense. So firstly, your maps contain additional strong boxes and they are corrupted. This is usually a very cheap section. This is just to get more strong boxes in our map. Then strong box monsters are enraged. The normal version of this is strong box monsters have 500% increased item quantity. This is just that those monsters that pop out when we kill them, we're basically getting five times as many drops from them. I think that's how that works, but you can get a lot of good stuff from this friend guitar holic. He got a mirror 
from a strongbox monster. Next up, your maps contain an additional abyss. Again, this is the elevated version, which gives us two additional abysses. However, the normal version just gives you one. And then lastly, we have this Beyond Sexton. These ones are pretty expensive. Apparently, they are selling for 50 Awakened Sextons. Don't know exactly what that is. It's a bit over a divine, I think. However, for your information, I before I bought these Elevated Sextons, I did not buy a single Sexton. I self-rolled all of my own Sextons. I will link a video in the description where I show how to roll these Sextons. As you can see, this is how many sections I have after running a whole lot of maps. And these are all the good ones that I have left over. These are all the bad ones. So this is self-sustaining. You do not actually need to go on a trade site to buy sections once you've done your first set. So don't stress about that. Rolling sections does take a bit of time, but it is super worth it. And as for our scarabs, we're going for a winged ambush. Again, you do not need to use winged. When I started doing this, I started with polished scarabs. The only one that I would say is mandatory to get at least gilded on is the abyss scarab. So this, let me quickly find a gilded scarab for you. And I have a video explaining this strategy, but the most important thing, abysses in area that do not lead to an abyssal depths lead to a Stygian Spire. This is where we are getting a massive, massive amount of monsters. Do not use polish, use gilded. As for the rest, if you're just starting out and you don't have a ton of currency to invest into your maps, you can just use polish to start and then work your way up. Next is winged reliquary. 250% more unique items found in areas. This one is also another one that I think you could probably get away with running gilded for. You're not gonna find as many headhunters and mage bloods, but chance of that is already astronomically low. So I I don't know if these have paid for themselves since I've started using them, but maybe. And then wing divination, 250% more divination cards found in area. And we are running, I've been mostly running burial chambers. This map is great, it's got a good layout, tons of monsters in it. However, it can also drop the Doctor, which is now sitting at 9.2 Divines. The other thing that this map can drop is the Fortunate, and these drop like candy. I've been averaging about eight per map, which is about a Divine and a half. So after running, I think this is from 22 maps, we have almost 14 sets my math's probably way off on that but tons of these so that is why we are running burial chambers and that is why we are running wing divination scarabs so just getting tons of fortunates the fortunate alone will pay for these wing divination scarabs and then the doctor is just the cherry on top however we can also run jungle valley this is another excellent map it also drops the fortunate and the other upside is that you will never find an altar in these maps, that gives a bonus to the boss. So you have a higher chance of getting ultimods that increase item quantity or chance to get a divine orb, something like that. So Jungle Valley, I've just thrown these in because I got a bit sick after running hundreds of burial chambers. You might also be asking why we're we not running Crimson Temple because that drops the Apothecary. The main reason is that Abyss tends to bug out in Crimson Temple can get to a point where your abyss gets stuck in a wall and then it just doesn't finish off doing what it needs to do so that's why we're not running crimson temple otherwise it would be good so let's just talk about maps and the kind of mods we're looking for on it the most important modifier is going to be monsters fire two additional projectiles so i haven't gone into it like i said i do have a full video on it which i'll link in the description but abysses these spires, what happens is that at the end of the chain of the abyss, you'll get a spire that then shoots out these projectiles and each of the projectiles, they land on the ground and out of those spawn tons of monsters. So the more projectiles we have on the map, the more of those projectiles is going to shoot out, more holes are going to spawn on the ground and more monsters are going to come out. So we want to get as many additional projectiles as possible. I have a video linked in the description on how to roll these plus two projectile maps with six modifiers. It's a bit weird, but it's how I got these and it's not too much of a schlep. And now another question I'm sure you're asking is, 
is it actually worth it to use winged scarabs? And my answer is absolutely. The only one that is maybe questionable is reliquary, but if you're gonna be doing this a lot, you will see headhunters and magebloods, but as for the rest, 100%, these are going to pay for themselves many times over. Don't skimp out. If you can afford winged scarabs, use winged scarabs. You will not regret it. You will only make more currency than if you use polished. As for the Saxons, same thing. These will pay for themselves. The only one that's maybe a bit questionable is the Elevator Beyond. I haven't tested it, but maybe it's all right. But yep, don't, don't skimp out. And as for the Delhi Orb I'm putting on the map, I'm just putting on the cheapest one I can find to get Delhi on the map. You can go 20%, 40%, however much you can handle. I wouldn't go too much. If you do not want to use a Delhi Orb, you can, instead of using these points over here, you can get these 8% chance to get a Delhi Mirror. Delhi, 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 Delhi over here. And then you can grab Unending Nightmare so that your Delhi never dissipates. This gives you a 48% chance to get a Delhi mirror in your map. So about half of your maps, you will get a free Delhi mirror. I will hop into a map, but I'm sure you're wondering how much currency am I making? How much div per hour? As for div per hour, I don't know. I've run 22 maps so far, and this is the currency that I've got from it. And this over here. Got a whole lot of these, got a whole lot of scarabs. I will make a separate video. I will run, I think 48, maybe I'll go up to 96 maps and then do a results video, but I'm not concerned about div per hour. I'm just wondering, is this fun? And it absolutely is. I'm having a blast doing this, finding tons of boulders, found a headhunter yesterday, found all this cool stuff and it's super fun. So in terms of fun per hour, this is at a 10 out of 10 for me. If there are other strats that give more div per hour, I don't care. I'm having a blast doing this. So let's actually hop into a map. I'm probably gonna have to cut these down because these maps take a long time to run. So over at the map device, if you have your seventh gate, you will be able to get an abyss on your map. And then what is recommended is Ulva. So if you have Ulva missions, use your Ulva missions. If you have run out of Ulva missions, you can use Bestiary, maybe even Immortal Syndicate. But if you wanna farm up a whole lot of Ulva missions, something I've been doing is I've added Vaults of Atziri to my item filter, and these are super quick to run. You can get 10% chance to get Ulva from a map completion by grabbing this node and these nodes and these ones over here and these ones over here. It takes like 10 minutes, you run 50 of those maps and you have like another 15 other missions. But for now, we don't have it. So let's just hop in here. So the way that I run these maps is in three phases. The first phase is going to be doing our Wildwood. The second is going to be clearing the map and opening the strong boxes. And then the third and final phase is going to be doing all of our abysses and then all of our elvas. So let's hop in. I'm gonna cut this down because it's gonna be like a 20 minute map. Hop into our Wildwood. If you do not know how to run the Wildwood properly, I will link in the description a guide on how to do these properly. But the wisp that we are primarily looking for is purple. Purple not only gives us increased item rarity, but it gives monsters increased projectiles, which you'll see soon will mean that we are getting more monsters out of our abysses. So let's clear this quickly. Looks like a very bad one. Quite possibly the worst Wildwood. Now phase two is just gonna be clearing the map. And while we are clearing the map, we're gonna be opening our strong boxes along the way. You can do them all at the end, but I would rather recommend just doing them as you encounter them. The reason we're not doing our abysses right at the start is we wanna find as many altars as possible with increased item quantity and divination card duplication, currency duplication, and other good stuff. So here's one over here, increase quant, increase rarity, grab that. This is our main goal. Just kill everything, get the ulcers. I will also link this filter in the description. This is mine. It is incredibly tight. So do bear in mind, it hides single chaos orb drops. It hides most unique items. It hides fusings, all small tier currency, but it will be linked in the description for you. 
And for those of you wondering about this build, it is Crouching Tuna's Fulcrum build. I will link that in the description too. Been having a blast with it, super tanky, decent amount of MF and very easy play style, especially when you have Bork's hands. You don't have to use too many buttons to play it. Here we have a Scarab dupe. This one is great. On this build, there is a modifier on blue altars, reduce life recovery per endurance charge, which kind of breaks this build. So just be aware of that if you are playing the Fulcrum. And I think we have, because we got so little juice, we pretty much cleared the map now. We have found a ton of altars. Got another 106% quantity, 192% rarity. It's a bunch. So now we have done that. We're going to do our little abysses. And again, these abysses, they are a bit finicky. I'm not going to go over exactly how to run them, but I do have a full video guide on abyss and how to run it properly without destroying it. But just for the sake of this video, I'm going to run one just so that you can see the spire pop out at the end. There is our spire. Now you're going to see the little projectiles this guy shoots out. On our minimap, you can see the more projectiles we have on our map, the more of those it's going to spit out. Normally, this doesn't die so fast, but we don't have a hell of a lot of juice on our map. And then after that, it just is about doing the Elva. So I'll finish this map later. Found ourselves an 899 Immutable Force. This was a particularly bad map, but I will do a results from my maps that I've done. I will link in the description a spreadsheet with the layout of all the things, which will include the Atlas tree, also the sections and scarabs we need. I'm sure some of you are also asking, do I have to MF to do this strategy? No, you do not. I haven't tested it without MF, but I imagine that because it is riding so hard on the Wildwood, if you do get a good Wildwood, even on a non-MF build, you're going to be making a lot of currency. Of course, I do recommend this build that I'm playing, which will be linked in the description, but I'm sure you can do this without MFing. I think that's going to be it for this video, so be sure to check the description for all the resources that I mentioned. Let me know what you've been doing this week to make currency. Have you been MFing? Have you been doing anything else but MFing? Have a wonderful day, everyone. Stay safe. Catch you in the next video where we will be showing the results of all of the maps we've run. Take care. Bye-bye.